presentation looks at two things. First, how we read and interpret literature in higher education. And second, one view of how to interpret the concept of torture in the novel. You should read assigned chapters three and four in the novel before writing your paragraph response in this lesson. It's easy to remember you're reading a work of fiction when the work is about some future time or some obvious fantasy world with dragons and fairies or aliens from outer space. But when works are set in times and places that are more like the world you live in, we often refer to those works as works of realism. It's easy to forget that you are reading something that has been made up by a writer. So the common trap that you might fall into is thinking about the characters in such works as real people and writing about them at that level, never stepping back from the work to examine it carefully as a work of art. In such interpretations, writers judge characters' actions as if they are real people. And of course, that's one of the joys of reading fiction is that we get so caught up in the story that we start to believe that we're in a place with characters and... Um, you know, that we're in, in their world and that their world is like ours. But as critical writers or analysts of literature, and that's who you are when you're in college, we need to take a different approach. Academics in my field read literature from different critical perspectives, and we sometimes refer to that as reading from a different critical lens. And it's a little bit like putting on a pair of shaded glasses that affect how you look at the world. You know the old saying of looking at the world through rose-colored glasses, and that means kind of that you see everything in a good light, the world is rosy to you, and, and that's exactly what we mean when we talk about putting on a different critical lens. Some of you may already read through a particular lens, but maybe you just haven't thought about it. Um, when you read a, any sort of a work based on who you are, something particular about you, that's reading through a lens. For example, I might read a novel that has a few women characters in it, and because I'm a woman, I might decide to focus on how they're depicted, uh, on what action the author gives them in the story, how they interact with other characters, and it might just be that I'm um, using what I know as a woman to influence how I interpret the work of literature. That's reading through a particular lens. And of course, I could intentionally try to not let who I am influence how I read. That's what we do when we say we're trying to be neutral about something. Or I could decide to go ahead and, and use that to give me a particular point of view. So let's look at a few examples of how putting on a particular lens can influence how we read and interpret fiction. So let's take a story that uh, I hope we all know, Cinderella, and talk about how viewing it from different lenses can affect how you interpret it. And I'm going to look at three lenses, the sociological, the feminist, and the psychoanalytic. So if I were reading the story through a sociological lens, which looks at uh, such things as social class and power relationships and maybe even politics, I would point out that this is a classic story of how the working class is oppressed into serving the upper class, but also that this depicts a mobile society in which a person can move from one class into another one through such things as hard work. Clearly, I would have to deal with the kind of help that Cinderella gets from her fairy godmother, but I could interpret that as the author suggesting that sometimes even hard work is not enough and that rising above your situation might often depend on chance uh, and some good luck. Now, if I decided to read the same story through a feminist lens, what might stand out to me in that kind of a reading um, that looks at how women are depicted um, might be the culture of beauty. And so I might focus on how the culture of beauty works against Cinderella's stepsisters. 
hurting their chances of being successful in finding husbands, which is probably a condition that is really important for women in their society, and how their so-called ugliness has affected their personalities, making them mean and spiteful characters. So you can see how that, that, that feminist interpretation um, that looks at this culture of beauty and looks at those um, female characters of the stepsisters, it's also looking at a, uh, a cultural situation of um, how beauty works in our culture. And then lastly, let's say I wanted to put on a psychoanalytic lens and read the story that way, um, which is generally means that you're reading kind of like a psychiatrist analyzing a character as a patient. And yes, some people in literary studies do that. Um, I might analyze, psychoanalyze the character of Cinderella and um, come to the conclusion that she seems to be exhibiting an inferiority complex after the loss of her biological mother and that she, because of that, she accepts her lot in life of having to be a servant to her stepfamily. Then you'd want to go a step further after you make that kind of a diagnosis of the character and think about you know, why the author is depicting such a character and, and what he or she might be saying about the effect of parental loss on human development. So the, um, you might be doing this kind of psychoanalysis of the work in order to make a larger comment about something in society. So I would like you to try to elevate your writing about our novel so that you're looking at it critically as a work of art and not a work about real people. So keep in mind that the characters that you encounter in the novel, the magistrate, the barbarian woman, the colonel, for example, they're all inventions from the mind of the author, Katsia. And, you know, your, your purpose in all the writings, including the next essay that you write, is to try to figure out what Katsia is trying to do by writing a story like this. And I had been going to provide you some excerpts from an article, but I had trouble um, manipulating the paragraphs in the PDF that I had of that article, so I've just decided to give you a, a brief overview of what that author was saying. And the parts of the article that I wanted you to read were um, a about what he had to say about the act of torture in the novel. And his interpretation is that um, torture in the novel was really a symbol of the power of the empire. And that uh, not only was torture a symbol, but the scars um, from the torture um, were kind of uh, a visible writing on the bodies of the barbarians as a mark of empire. So you can see it was kind of an abstract concept. It was not a realistic interpretation of actual torture on real people. It was more of how it worked as a symbol to um, show the power of the empire. Um, you you know may or may not agree with that. You um, you might think it's interesting, but you know of course you may see. Uh, it in terms of comparing it to real uses of torture in the world. So when you read it, you know, you might be interested in doing a historical reading that um, compares it to actual torture that happened in South Africa in the late 1970s when this novel was written. You might decide that maybe Kutsia was trying to make a comment about what was actually going on in his culture of South Africa. So you'll see that the question that I'm asking you to respond to in this lesson is about torture. And I'd like you to think about responding on a higher level than one that just looks at the novel's characters as real people. And the last page of this presentation has a couple of sources for you. If you're interested in reading more about critical lenses, I have two links for you. The first one is to a page that um, was actually written by a couple of classes that I had in the past. And um, this one page on the site is just a brief description of a number of critical lenses that you could use. 
Uh, the second one is a little more of a comprehensive site. It, ha it uh, has a lot more critical lenses to describe, critical theories, I think she might call them. And um, it's very nice because she has short examples and the descriptions are really short. So it is a really nice resource if you want to just get an idea of the different approaches that people take to literature.